Alrighty. So, I'm back. I'm better. I almost started a video, but then I had to piss. So, now we're going to do a breakdown of the show. So, for the entire saga of Babylon 5, this is really a phenomenal series. And you can't go wrong with this. You really can't. It has not only the best uh, plots, premise, um, character evolutions, um, setting, uh, uh, engaging characters, and all that good shit. From, I actually had to dig the booklet out because I couldn't remember people's names. Um, let's see. Out of both captains, Sheridan and Sinclair are my favorites, but I have to go with Sinclair, because Sinclair was my top favorite. Um, fuck off, Whisper. Ah, uh, whoa. <laughs> Damn it. Come on. Good boy. There we go. Stephen Franklin was good. Londo. Yeah, my, my favorite character, my favorite uh, back and forth in this show was definitely Londo and Jakar. And also Delin Throne and uh Vero Viracoto with that as well. <coughs> oh, excuse me. <laughs> and Lita, who was part of uh what was that? Psyops, I think. Yeah. So yeah, so for this series, plus this show is dark as fuck. Literally, like for 1994, this was dark as hell. And that really surprised me a lot. Um, <laughs> it just, it blew me away at how dark it really got to be. Like, I didn't expect it to be so dark. But it was, like, it's dark story-wise, it is dark politically it's it's heavily political too, which really surprised me watching it, you know, first time through. So when I rewatch this the second time through, I'm gonna pick up on a lot more shit easier because I actually understand what's going on more. Um You know, you have engaging you have characters that you can identify with, you can side with, you can love, you can hate, you can cherish, you know, that you just go through them and you never realize how much of a, uh, uh, touchstone this show really became and how iconic it became so quickly. Like it, when they, when it was first announced in 88, People had to, everybody had to wait four or five years for this to come to life because the show used early CGI for a lot of care, for a lot of the, um, for the battles and the locations. Another favorite character of mine was Kosh. That dude, oh my god, Ambassador Kosh. That motherfucker. <laughs> oh man, he was, I liked him because he was so... Um, what was he? He was so, uh, mysterious, and he was so, uh, intricate, and he was so, um, oh, what's, not anti not, not anti devilian Well, yeah, that too, but, um, that means ancient, by the way. Um... Uh, I can't think of the word, but I don't know. <laughs> they were all those characters. Everything in this series was phenomenal. You had, you know, an engaging pilot start to finish because everything hinges on the pilot of a show. Everybody knows that if the pilot doesn't sell, the show goes to shit right away. Like some shows don't get as far as the first episode. So it, this was a huge gamble and for, you know, everybody to wait four or five years for this to come to TV, that's a big damn deal <laughs> because they had to work with making, bringing the ships to life, bringing 
um, just all the stories to life. And as the years progressed, you know, you had, you know, technology increased and got better. So the quality of the shows were more intricate and well received. And you also had, you know, um, what else? Technology, yeah, tech, technology was advanced more back in the nine, a little bit more in the nineties when this was around. So it was a lot quicker to make, you know, the CGI aspects of it grow faster. Um, you know, did, it, it's just so good. And why is it better than Star Wars? Well, shit. Star Wars, the prop, the thing that makes this better than Star Wars is Star Wars relies too heavily on Jedi versus Sith. That's their mainstay. That's what they always, that's their main go to. Every time they make a film or a game, a book, whatever, it's always Jedi versus Sith. And it always goes to, they jump, they always use the originals to cash in on that shit as well. But that's for another video. But for this, it's, you know, Jedi versus Sith. That's what they always go to. That's their number one go to, Jedi versus Sith. Always. Whereas there's layers to Star Wars. There's layers to Babylon 5 as well. With this, you have the political side of it. You have the enemy side of it. You have the uh, heroes on the side of it. Um, and you have the conflicts in between and how everything ties together. And plus, Star Wars is so saturated, and, you know, they throw it at you, and it, it gets annoying after a while. I got so sick of Star Wars that, you know, I turned to B5, and I'm glad I did, because B5 really, you know, amped it up for me and kept me hooked. Because when you stick to one damn thing, it's like if you're in a relationship and all you do during sex is missionary... The shit gets boring after a while. Like, seriously. That's the thing. Like, it gets boring after a while. It's the same fucking motion over and over and over, and then you're done. That's it. Nothing new. So, with B5, you know, they didn't stick to just, you know, one story. They did multiple stories and multiple subplots as well. And that's what made me stay hooked with this series and made me, you know spend, you know, upwards of about, mm, I'll say 60 or $70 altogether. I have not read the comics for Babylon 5. I haven't read the books for Babylon 5 either. I got to buy those yet. So once I get those, then I can give you a review on that stuff. But for this show and the movies as a whole, it's a straight up 10. Maybe hell, even an 11 because... When you kick back and binge watch this, you'll see that, one, this show is ahead of its time. Two, it's a cult classic. Three, it is quotable. Four, the characters, you know, really do shine. And they're not neglected. Nobody is neglected in this series. That is the best part, because a lot of shit, a lot of stuff... A lot of sagas and franchises, they neglect certain characters, which really sucks. Um, number five, you know, you get to pick and choose who you like and what you love. You know, there's, you can choose whatever season you love, whatever movies you liked out of this. You know, you can start at the very end with Lost Tales and if you wanted if you want to do that, you can start at Lost Tales and then, you know, watch it all in reverse all the way back up to, you know, the pilot episode, the pilot film of In the Beginning. So <laughs> that's the best part. That's what I love so much. That's why this is better than Star Wars. Like you got the engagement of it and it's not super saturated. They don't stick to just, you know, one fucking premise. There's multiple premises. And if you're into, you know, uh, political sci-fi, this is for you. If you are into um, 
yeah, political sci-fi, this is for you. If you're into dark sci-fi, that's it's surprisingly dark, this is for you. If you are into, um, you know, all these characters and whatnot, from Wando to the Nova, Garibaldi, Sheridan, uh, fuck, I forgot her name. <laughs> Ain't that a bitch. I forgot the motherfucker's name. Uh, what is your name? Come here, girl. Lockley. There we go. If you're into Lockley or Gideon, you know, this is for you. Like, I'm not gonna lie. Like, this show is phenomenal in its own ways. Man, get the hell over there. <laughs> um, what I recommend is to friends? Obviously. Like, shit. <sighs> Get hold on in the box. Sit on the bed. Kiss my ass. There we go. Um, if you are looking for an alternative to today's TV shows, I recommend Babylon Five. Like, if you don't own it, you can probably find it for cheap as hell on eBay or Amazon. I know there's a box set for this but the box set is i think uk only so that means region two for discs which is yeah region two so you can change the region on your xbox or playstation consoles to that region to watch it if you want to do that because the box set wasn't made for us it wasn't made for Region 1 consoles at all. So, yeah, if you like TV series that have spin-off films like this, I mean, shit, that's what, five, six, seven spin-off films. Seven. Seven. This is for you. <laughs> um, if you can't handle, you know, a slow-paced show, if you think this is slow-paced, you're wrong. But if you think it is, you know, this might not be for you. Um, you know, <laughs> it's just, it's one of those shows, if you want to give something new a try, you know, I suggest this always, you know, it's like, just try it. Even if you, if you don't like it, just, you know... At least you tried, you know? Can't say you didn't try. But yeah, like, <laughs> I mean, I was the type that I did not care at all for this series when it first was announced year, decades ago. And, you know, I'm glad I got into it at, when I got older. Because this shit is phenomenal. Like, you can't go wrong. 41 discs over... God damn. Um probably two day two or three days worth of episodes and shit. Yeah. I think this is as long as um twenty two Maybe as long as X Files, I think. I'm not sure. I'll have to recount it up then, but yeah. So yeah, if you love Babylon 5, you've heard of Babylon 5, and you enjoyed it, you know, let me know. Because <laughs> I guarantee you, if you give this a try, it's worth the watch. It really is. And where would I recommend to start? You can start anywhere you like. If the movies seem interesting to you, try them out. If Season one seems familiar, go for it. If the other seasons are cool, go for it. If Crusade is your go-to starter, go for it. Wherever you want to go. That's how I recommend shit. You know, I don't expect everybody to follow what I say. I just, you know, it's my opinion, not your... It's my opinion that I'm sharing with you. If you don't like this kind of stuff, that's cool. I understand that. I totally get it. It's all right. Not everybody likes stuff. Um, yeah, so that was Babylon 5. So, 
1994 to, well, 93 to 2007. There we go. That was hard. <laughs> so, tire series, 93 to 2007. I don't know when the comics ended, but, eh, find out eventually. And there's also a two-volume encyclopedia out there I want to get, too. So, I really want to check that out as well. So, until next time, like and subscribe for Earth's Last Best Hope.